lot of you want to see me win that championship. You can understand my perspective, where I'm coming from, is that's not so important to me right now. You want to know what's really important to me? That's what this show's about. So if you enjoy watching me in the ring and you want to just remain a fan, proceed no further if you just want to hold those memories. Because this here, nobody wrote this shit. This is the real me. Rob Zakowski, but don't call me that. Uh, I usually do get RVD by everybody. A few people still call me that, but this is the real me. This is my real house. This is what I come home to. And um, this is where I want to be, where I'm hanging out for a while. So I'm going to share that with you. Even though um, some of my views are not the same as everyone else's because I stand up for certain things I believe in that you're not supposed to brag about or be vocal about or whatever. I consider myself a good role model. Even though I think and know that cannabis should be legal, I want a chance where I can explain the whole truth and say kids should not smoke pot. That's definitely my stance on that. Why do I want to say that on someone else's show? Why do I want to do an interview for somebody else where they can pick some, certain words that I say? Why not do it here on my forum? That's what RVD TV is all about. I'm going to express my views. I'm going to share them with you. I'm going to show you the real me. My whole career, I've been different than the other wrestlers. I'm one of a kind. I'm the only wrestler that wears the cool airbrushed singlets. I have all the original moves. Well, guess what? That translates outside of the ring, too. A very wise man once told me, we all view everything, view everything different, Rob. We all view everything different. That is so true. I'm one of a kind. Guess what? So are you. I have a lot of questions. I have a hard time conforming to certain uh, guidelines that don't make as much sense to me. I have a, a nature to question things and, and experience for myself and judge for myself if that's right or wrong. That's being individual. Guess what? You're an individual too. I think you should act like an individual. I'm not going to encourage you to act like me. I'm not going to encourage you to think the way that I think and to share my views, but I want you to celebrate having your own views. That's, that's our birthright. We all have our own free will. We all see everything differently. We all think differently, and that's a good thing. Obviously, I never patterned myself after somebody else. And, you know, there's leaders and there's followers. But either way, while there's only been one Rob Van Dam, there's only been one you as well. I hope that while watching this show, that uh, if you get anything from it that you can use in life, I hope you learn the importance of being individual. Wouldn't the world be a boring ass place if we all thought the same? Yeah, there seems to be a um, controversial topic in the media these days about the professional wrestling industry and people dying well before their age. And you have a lot of personal history with a lot of the names of the people that have passed, even most recently, just the last two years alone. There's been quite a few figures in the industry. And I know that you were just called a minute ago about a new one. I was wondering what your thoughts were on all of this. I think, you know, I think we'll be fine as long as we're safe. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you scared the shit out of me. That was a good one. You <laughs> just told a funny story uh, earlier because I believe you got out of the pool and you had your hair down long and then that started a um, brief couple of recollections you had of trying to be incognito. One was at a comic show where you had put on, um, I think the um, Ghost Rider flame mask that you have. And you put like a sombrero on and you told me about an instance in New York City with Booker T coming down the flight with him, the uh, flight of stairs. 
Man, you fucked that all up yeah, right here. <laughs> there was no stairs. In fact, there was an elevator that I would thought you said escalator, up. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had know. elevator doors opening up. I had security saying, we got talent on level one. The whole visual. And you fucked it up and twisted it up in your mind and made it into it. All right, escalator. I'm going to give myself a recount. All right, <laughs> three, two, one. You told me of a story of being at WrestleMania in New York City. And you decided that you and Booker had to go and get some shirts for the Hall of Fame. And then as you... I decided were... that we had to go and get some... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. We were in... Uh, WrestleMania was in New York City, and all the fans knew where we were staying. So it was crazy, uh, crazy packed with fans. And when you would... Uh, take the elevator down to the lobby. Couldn't even go through the lobby. Had to go out a back secret entrance in the ship, but doors would open up and all the fans would uh, be held off by security. It was crazy. Me and uh, Booker T needed some uh, some shirts with a button up collars for, I think it was Hall of Fame, some shit. And uh, I had no idea before that because I guess it had been a long time since I'd worn a button-up collar. I had no idea that I couldn't buy a uh, shirt that would button up at a regular store. We went all over New York City, kept hopping in the cabs, Charmel, Booker T, and myself. Um, whatever the deal is, I'm half an inch bigger. I think they go to 18 and I'm 18 and a half or uh, something like that. And we had to go to... Uh, big and Tall shop, which I thought was crazy. I don't shop at Big and Tall. What are you, nuts? Uh, but I did find a shirt there. And uh, to get out through the hotel, I put on my incognito outfit that I have worn at the Comic Cons. And I put this on sometimes, you know, just to have a little profile and without putting too much into it. Basically, I get recognized everywhere I go. People pick me off and they recognize my ponytail. It stands out. And so if I hide my ponytail, it really takes a lot out of uh, whatever distinguishing fe features people pick off. So I put my ponytail up and I put on a skull cap, throw out some shades, I'm good to go. It doesn't keep everybody away, but I would say about 75% of the people just won't see it because they're not expecting to see it anyway if they're not looking, if they're just shopping, walking, whatever. You ever heard of hiding in plain sight? I do that quite a bit. Um, Booker looked at me in the elevator. Man, what you think you're going to do with that? And, and I got my incognito. Incognito. Show me look at him. He's trying to tell me it's not going to work. He said, man, ain't nobody going to be fooled by that. I said, no, book, I mean, it, it, it actually works. And he says, shit, look at him. You think he don't look like RVD now or something? Doors opened up. We went out through the crowd, walked out into the uh, sidewalk. You know, fans went up to him and said, Booker T, Booker T, where's RVD? He looked back at me. Back at me, I was just there. And he pointed, uh, and then he said, Shh, he's back at the hotel. And they walked away and said, man, I got to get me one of them. Awesome. I'm here to give you the official word. Breaking news, not really, but official news. The store that everyone's asking me about, RVD's Five Star Comics and Wrestling. It's right here. It's a sign. It's another sign. It's a lot of good memories. Besides. Alright, what? You need one of those. That's the only way you'll ever wear one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big dog. Yeah. Right now. What up? Bye. I'm going to make a star. Hey, man. I'm going to make a star. Hey, man. Me and Lil D slurping on a slurp beat. What's up, Pete? Hey, what up? Dominic. What up? Dominic. What up? What up? Yeah. What up? <laughs> okay, Dad, I'll say it. Besides that, it's closed. It's now an empty space where all the fun used to be. So, to own a piece of history, now you can look at robvandam.com and you can order some of the merchandise because I still have it all. Our awesome so, wall of fame. Best shoes that have been in here. 
Wait, wait. Get out of here, these guys out here. They're going to look like the movie star. Lots of books, pictures, toys. Lots of kick ass. Look at it. Models. T-shirts, wrestling masks. RVD's boots. Replica belts. Some RVD. Autograph the stuff there. Sweet. This is the shoes and that videos. Cars and t shirts. Movie scripts. Back issue bands. Lots and lots of new toys. Fantastic Four was awesome, we just saw it. The Bat Cave. It's the back room for employees only. That's a cooler action figures. Bring the stereo up on the roof. RVD. Awesome. This is a comic wall. Anchor bags, TPs, cool RVD on Ghost Rider's bike. My bandana with autograph on the ceiling. Book of tea. Got the Hitman Heart. Awesome. What a cool piece of RVD artwork. Yeah. Pretty intense. And Sabo. Don't show up here knocking on the door saying, hey, what happened? What happened to your comics? Where's my comics? Where's my action figures? You gotta go somewhere else now. This one didn't make it. Go to robvandam.com and check it out. earlier because I got my video camera. Man. Right on, Daddy. I'm, I'm uh, happy. I'm happy to uh, do a double knockout with you in Tampa Bay. Are we live? Are we rolling, Daddy? Well, yeah. Don't give me no rap. I'll give you 30 seconds. No, I'll dude, so I can man. Talk as long as I, I want to, Daddy. Can. We're going to listen to it later, right. too. Here, this uh, is his family. <laughs> yeah, did a double knockout. Uh, we did a double knockout. I was returning Van Damme's call. We caught each other and just tagged. And then uh, he says, oh, I'm at my mom and dad's. And I you said, said in Banner Creek, oh, Michigan, Daddy? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> and uh, he said, no, I'm in Ocala, and I'm going to the fish tank tomorrow. I said, oh, shit, I'll meet you there. <laughs> but then he called me back about the dog. I said, no, 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 I'll babysit. I've been to the aquarium. Babysit my mom and dad's dog. Oh, yeah, I've seen him on the road room. before. Thanks for the hospitality. Oh, I wish I could. I wish you guys would have ate, stayed oh, and ate. Man. Remember that time you did that to me and I didn't sell it and I was bleeding. You remember? You, you know you do this in the ring, right? Yeah. Right? It was in uh, in, in Boston, but the small town Worcester or something on stage, and you fucking hit me so hard and I didn't sell it. Right. I was bleeding. Look at me. He said, "Oh fuck, but I just I ain't selling it." Oh, it hurts, Daddy. It was blood and shit. Yeah, you set a good example for the kids. <laughs> How about? When I, I went to make the save, one, two, and I flew, I was running late to make the save, hit above in the head and baton break. I oh, broke my arm, yeah. had to get the steel plate put in with six so screws sweet. right there. Yeah. And I worked that night finish. I said, you know, Daddy, uh, come on. And I said, oh, shit, Sandman said, let's go to the strip club. There's nothing wrong with that. Put a little ice on it, let's go. <laughs> so it hurt so bad, I went to the hospital, oh. and it was broken so bad that they had to put a steel plate, Daddy. Oh. So yeah. it's been in uh, Sam is, oh, it ain't nothing, you know? Yeah. Manager of champions. That's, that's right. That's what I did. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, we got some stories. <laughs> man, RVD. Awesome, man. Thanks for all the hospitality. You guys are an hour and a half Appreciate out. It. Cool. Well, I might be able to do it an hour and 29. I tend to. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little over, just a little bit. Only enough to make a minute difference. So I love it. An hour and a half, not a 
not a full mile over the street limit, but about one point or a point. What's a, hey, what's a good time for me? Say it again, what, what's a good time like a for me show. to um, uh, camp out in LA? What's a good month? In the next four or five months? Cause after August. After August? I'll be 50. Happy. Now I'm 49, dude. but I see I'll be 50 years old, Daddy. And six pack, me and Van Damme, Daddy. Might have to Look at that. Might have to, might have to oh, see I'm going to shave mine. As soon as you all leave, I'm going to go in there and right. shave it. I'm going to be just like Van Damme when I grow up. <laughs> Look, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, I nair. I use nair. Do you? Okay. Not not nair for men. That shit don't work. But no, I, I I used to shave it. Okay. I guess it was body fat <laughs> though. You know what I mean? How do I get rid of this, oh, really? Daddy? Uh, you need that so you can stretch. Right. It's flexibility. But, but, you know. So it's only there. I don't have no body fat nowhere else. But this, you know. But yeah. Looks good to me if I was here. Why well, you get your wrestling boots on? You doing a uh, indie? I didn't make any tennis shoes. What size do you wear? I got all kind of brand new tennis shoes. That's okay. These are fine. I got 12s. Yeah, I, I, got do 12. Wear, I do wear a 12. But I'm Perfect. I'll give you a pair. Just send them back to me or... Uh, I don't want to pack brother, them. Brother, nice. I don't want to pack them. You know what I mean? These are fine, dude. Brother, these are so easy to slip on. You got that <laughs> lace them up booty. You don't even want to get in the ring if you're wearing fucking wrestling boots. Let me give you a pair of nights or, or, or something else and then uh, you see